Hello everyone and welcome back to Epistemology and just to keep you right up to where we're at let's just have a look at where we're going and where we've been. So so far we've looked at what is knowledge trying to define knowledge and then we went into a huge chunk that was called reason as a source of knowledge and that explored the idea of the rationalists versus the empiricists on knowledge and how we come to whether we can come to knowledge a priori. So we looked at innatism versus tabula rasa in that section and then we ventured into Descartes ideas on how we come to knowledge just through thinking um, and that was the intuition and deduction thesis and then we used David Hume another empiricist to argue against that and now we're on to a brand new area we're still wondering how we acquire our knowledge, but this time we're starting to look at quite intuitive theories on perception. So the theme is perception as a source of knowledge. And then lastly, we'll be heading off to looking at scepticism and the limits of knowledge. So our focus then are the theories of perception and what I would like you to do um, is to fill out, to find the sheet, to dig it out. It is on eBrock, um, but I will also hand these out to you. I'd like you to fill this sheet in as you go today on direct realism and the problems and responses to direct realism. So we've got all of our arguments in one place. So this unit is asking us all about this. So you see an apple on your table. We think you see an apple on the table. What, it, what do you think you see exactly? Do you think that you're perceiving something that actually exists in the world, mind independently? Do you think that you're seeing or touching or smelling an object that has shape, it has colour? Or do you think maybe that this thing, this shape, this colour, this fruit, is just in your mind. So we're focusing on perception as a source of knowledge, of a way of coming to know things. And when we say perception, this refers to our ability to use our senses, things like our sight, hearing and touch to come to our knowledge. So if you perceive that a table exists, what does that mean? Does this object have properties such as shape, colour, texture, or are those just properties in your mind? And what happens to the table when you stop perceiving or thinking, seeing, touching it? Does it continue to exist? So over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at certain theories of perception. And you can see that we're going to start off by looking at direct realism and then on to indirect realism. And finally, we'll be considering the ideas that seem to be quite radical and extreme of idealism. And we also have to consider the problems with these theories as we go. So let's start by getting into direct realism. And this isn't the first time that you've looked at realism. We've just looked at it for metaethics. And we talk of realism in the same way. So direct realism is the most basic theory of perception, and it's also known as naive realism. Now, this is the idea that objects like tables and apples exist independently, mind independently. So things like rocks, apples, bikes, cheese are out there in the world. So they exist mind independently, and these objects have properties, they possess properties, that exist independently of us. So they have taste, sound, colour, shape. So when we perceive objects such as books, cups, apples, we perceive these objects as they are with their properties. So when I say I perceive an apple, what am I actually saying according to a direct realist? So be aware then, direct realism is the idea that our perception of the apple and the apple are identical. 
There is no stage of mediation between the world and my experience of the world. So what we immediately and directly perceive is the apple and its properties. So what am I saying as a direct realist? Well, let me draw a little picture of an apple. And this is me looking at it. I'm saying that I directly perceive an object. That this object exists beyond my mind. So we use the phrase mind independently, exists mind independently. And this object possesses properties. Okay, so I'd like you to fill in that first bit of the sheet, defining, uh, with reference to existence and properties, defining direct realism, because we're about to launch into four different areas um, of issues with direct realism. Okay, so the main problems with direct realism that you need to be able to outline are the problems of perceptual variation, the problems of illusion, hallucination, and the time lag argument. Now we will literally whiz through these. I'm going to outline them for you um, and also try to come up with some kind of response for each one uh, from a direct realist. So one of the key ideas that we're going to be exploring throughout these issues that we're going to be looking at is the idea that's coming from the our indirect realists who say that we don't, we don't perceive objects directly. We only indirectly perceive them. What we directly perceive is some form of representation of an object to our minds. And we call this sense data. Have a look at these two possibilities. I perceive a round tower in the distance. Now I perceive the appearance of a round tower in the distance. Now, which one can we be more certain of? I think we're going to be saying this one. So we know what we immediately perceive. We don't necessarily know the object of perception. Okay, so our first problem with direct realism is called the argument from perceptual variation. And I know some of you have looked at this before with Bertrand Russell's, Russell's table. Now we could use Bishop Barclay to illustrate this idea. So Barclay argued that color is not an objective property belonging to an object. And he noticed that clouds can appear red from a distance, but this varies depending on where you're viewing the clouds from. And in the same way, he said, a flower can appear yellow, but under a microscope, that color, that property of color um, can be lost. Therefore, color and other properties are not found in the objects themselves, but relate to the effect physical objects have on us. So this is the, the idea, the challenge that what we are directly perceiving is not the physical object, but something that the physical object is making us think. Okay, so Bertrand Russell and his table. I think some of you have looked at this before and I'd like you to look at it again. So Russell observed that the colour of a table might look different in different lights and the shape of the table very much depends on what angle you're looking at it from. The texture of the table also depends on how close you close in you are to a table. So this idea of perceptual variation is really pointing to the idea that direct realists are wrong, that objects do not possess properties in themselves. There's something of us in the way we perceive any object. So to formally kind of outline 
the argument from perceptual variation and to put on your sheets, please, could we say that our perception of an object changes and an object cannot be changing its colour continually. So <clears throat> a table cannot be brown and yellow simultaneously. Objects cannot be exactly as we directly perceive them. We do not perceive, directly perceive the object, but the appearance of the object in our minds. Therefore, direct realism is false. And I'm hoping you can see that this point is pointing us towards a different theory of perception, which we'll be going into next time. OK, I want you to see that that attack from perceptual variation is really saying because our perceptions seem to change, depending on where we are and um, the, the closeness, the nearness, the lighting that, that seems to be um, in place, because these things change, then those objects, we're saying, they do not possess um, mind-independent properties. So we're sort of saying because of change and variation, they cannot possess mind independent properties. But that's not how a direct realist might see it. So let's see how they might respond. So to say that because objects sometimes appear differently, then we can only indirectly perceive them, they say is incorrect. We can perceive objects directly. The object just appears to be different because of the perspective of the perceiver. But the objects still have intrinsic properties. They still possess properties that are mind independent. So they, they have intrinsic properties and things that they would call relational properties. Now, relational properties can be understood in their relationship to other things. Direct realists argue that objects and their properties can be perceived immediately, but that some of the opposite properties will change if they are relational properties. Let's try and make clear this distinction between intrinsic and relational properties. So remember what we're trying to do is defend, defend direct realism. And the way they do this is to explain that when we perceive an object, we are perceiving its properties, the properties it, it possesses. But some of these are intrinsic properties. Um, so these might be things that don't change. So like mass or you know weight. But then there are properties in the objects that seem different in different situations, depending on the perception or position of the perceiver. But the key thing is, please, to really note is that whether they're relational or intrinsic, these are properties that belong to the object. Okay, so they, sorry, that's, that's wrong, not to the perceiver. Yes, the perception of the perceiver is going to make a difference, but the claim is that the properties are found here, okay, within the object. So we're not saying that any of the properties are mind dependent. We are retaining the idea that all properties are mind independent. And I would like you to look a little bit more at this idea of perceptual variation. Um, there's stuff in the booklet on it. There's stuff from John Locke and from Leibniz. So if you could have a, a look through and perhaps record Locke's bucket of water example as a really good example of perceptual variation.
So then, today we've managed to look at and start our theories of perception, focusing in on direct realism, and I'm hoping that you could define that really nicely, nicely and clearly. And then we started to look at the problems with direct or na naive realism by looking at the problem of perceptual variation, looking at examples from Bertrand Russell, John Locke. And then we tried to respond to that problem using the idea of an object having intrinsic and relational properties. So next time we're going to be looking at the other problems with direct realism.